Okay, in this video, we're going to start the beam reactions, the types of beam, the types of supports and the types of loads. So we have beam and reactions. We have various types of beams are used for carrying the transverse load and they are supported by either roller supports or by fixed support or hinge support. So in fact, let's define first beam. A beam is a horizontal member which carries a transverse load that is perpendicular to the axis of the beam. So let's say we have a beam here. For the beam normally we use two type of support. One is called as hinge support and one is called as roller support. So we have here a cylindrical roller. This support is a hinge support and when the rollers are provided it is called as a roller support. This one is a longitudinal axis of the beam and perpendicular to this longitudinal axis we have a loads which are called as transverse load. So we have point load acting here which is inclined at a particular angle. This one is the point load is acting vertically. So one of the type of the loads is called as point load. Now whenever you are given the point load you normally resolve the loads which are inclined. Never resolve the load which are perpendicular to the axis of the beam. Sometimes the load is distributed over a particular length that is normally represented by this is called as uniformly distributed load and in short we called it as UDL uniformly distributed load. Similar to UDL we have uniformly varying load where the load intensity is going to vary from zero to some value. So this time it is called as UVL uniformly varying load. In addition to this we have number of loads that we'll discuss later on. Right now we introduce the three types of load. One is called as point load, one is called as UDL and the other is called as UVL. Then we have one more load is called as couple year, which is normally has a tendency to rotate the beam. Now depending upon the support position, we can classify the beam as simply supported beam, overhang beam, cantilever beam, continuous beam. If we have the support at the end of the beam, it will be called as simply supported beam. And if we have the simply supported beam and some portion is extended either to the right side or to the left side or to the both side, it is called as overhang beam. Now if it is extended on both sides, it is called as double overhang. The third type of beam is called as continuous beam. In a continuous beam, we have more than two supports and a very large span is supported using the roller support. When you have to use the very large span is to be supported, then the number of roller has been increased or there are the hinges. This is called as continuous beam. Normally used in the slabs for a flyover. And we introduce here one more type of beam that is normally used in the diving board in the swimming tank is called as cantilever beam. So in the case of cantilever beam, one end is fixed in the rigid support and other end is free where the person can jump from this point. So this type of beam is called cantilever beam. So these are the few examples of beam. In uh, practical cases, there are other number of beams are available. But as far as the first theory is considered, we'll only discuss the few types that is simply supported, overhang, continuous and cantilever beam. So we have simply supported, we have either overhang or we have either double overhang. Third type of beam is called as continuous beam and the fourth one is called as cantilever beam. Now let us idea about the support and the support reactions. So start with this, we have a roller support. So this one is representing the plane of roller and parallel to this plane on the bottom of that we have the plane of roller and on that plane the roller will move. The roller will normally move parallel to the plane of roller. It means that this device can slide like this. So it has a full permission to have horizontal motion. But the vertical motion of this roller is not allowed and therefore the roller has always one reaction perpendicular to the plane of roller. Whereas the permission is given to have horizontal motion, so no reaction will exist in the horizontal direction. So along this plane, that is parallel to the plane, the motion is allowed. Whereas perpendicular to the plane of motion is restricted. And when we have a restriction, we have a reaction. So this motion is prevented. And therefore, in the case of roller, so we have vertical reaction perpendicular to the plane here, which is normally called as R or sometimes represented as only Ry. 
remember that you will get reaction when the motion is prevented or restricted and normal reaction is perpendicular to the plane suppose your roller is inclined at any angle suppose plane made by the roller and it makes an angle theta with the horizontal then your roller reaction is always perpendicular to this plane so this value will be equals to r and then we can call this as r and we can resolve into two components for calculation purpose as rx and other is ry so one thing is true for the roller that we have only one reaction that equal to r and is always perpendicular to the plane in the third case we have a roller and this time your plane is vertical and therefore the reaction will be perpendicular to this plane the other type of support is called as pin support no translation about x axis and y axis but only give the permission about the rotation so we have two reaction in the case of pin support then we have the types of load normally whatever the types of load we have the udl and uvl so they are the magnitude of the resultant force is equal to what the area of the load diagram and the line of action will always pass to the centroid centroid of rectangle you can represent as l by 2 from the 90 degree and for the triangle you can remember it as l by 3 from 90 degree so for any triangle you just first find out what is the 90 degree and then from that 90 degree you can take out l by 3 then remaining distance will be l to l by 3 from the apex and the equivalent load will be equal to just the area of that figure suppose we have a rectangle area will be equal to base into height so this is a standard symbol used for the uniformly distributed load or sometimes we can represent with a constant intensity rectangle and the height of all these arrow is constant that is called as udl normally the unit of this one is newton per meter or newton per mm let's say that suppose we have a load here equal to 100 newton per meter and let's say we have a span here of 2 meter then area of this rectangle will be equals to 200 102 and the load will be exactly act at l by 2 to convert udl into point load so it is represented by point load equal to 200 that is 2 in 200 and we'll pass through the centroid at a distance equal to l by 2 so 2 by 2 will be equals to 1 meter each so there are two standard presentations of udl as shown here figure 1 and 2 the idea of udl is that a person is standing it is called as point load and if the same person will sleep then it will be called as udl because his weight will be distributed over the particular length so suppose the person weight is 1000 and height is 2 then we have the udl will be equals to 1000 divided by 2 that equal to 500 newton per meter that was the idea over a span of 2 meter so total will be same as 500 into 2 that will be equal to 1000 then let we have an idea about the uvl we have a uvl here and the point load is uh, is uniformly varying from 0 to 200 newton per meter and we have given a span equal to 4 meter so this time you have to calculate first area of the triangle which is equals to half base into height first you have to locate where is the 90 degree of the triangle and from 90 you have to mark the centroid at distance equal to l by 3 so this one is the centroid and we have a load here and this distance will be l by 3 then remaining will be 2 l by 3 so l by 3 is same as 4 by 3 which is 1.33 remaining when calculated as 4 minus 1.33 and the area of the load will be 1 by 2 base is 4 and height is 200 that you can calculate so we have uvl and udl load it's just area and the passing through centroid concept then we have one more type of load that is called as moment load let's consider here a beam which is normally has two standard support one is called as hinge and one is a roller support this one is called as main beam and to this beam we have given a certain extension like this so in the case of moment load the external load will act on the external portion either horizontal or vertical this time we will show horizontal load now in this case you have to shift this load to the common point on the main beam and the extension so follow the standard rules for this step number one shift the force without change in magnitude and direction and step number two you can calculate moment of this force about the common point that is this point so moment of this force will be clockwise and the moment is defined as force multiplied by perpendicular distance so we are d will be perpendicular distance about the point a so you have to calculate moment of force about point a which is equals to f multiplied by d and the sense of this one is anti-clockwise so whenever you have changed the line of action of force or we have shifted the force from one position to second position the extra moment will come and the moment value will be equal to f into d and the sense will have to retain that equal to anti-clockwise so these are the two simple rules 
Rule number one says that the shape the force without change in magnitude and direction. And the rule number two says take the moment of a given force at a common point between the main beam and the extension. That is about the point A. And the sense you have to check then. So this type of load will be called as moment load. So always shift the load which are eccentric to the main beam using this concept. All the load should must act only on the main beam. Extension on extension part load should not be there because it will be difficult to calculate the reaction. Suppose we have given this figure, we have one load again extended portion here and load is acting at point B and this time is a vertical load. So you have to shift this load at point A because it is directly connected to the main beam at point A. So using the rule number one, your load will be remain same that is vertically downward. And then to find out the moment, you require a perpendicular distance. Whenever you require a perpendicular distance, you draw one line passing through the force F in the same line of action and where you are interested you draw one more parallel line and measure the perpendicular distance between these two parallel line that will give you the perpendicular distance D. So this time the perpendicular distance will be A not B. So you draw the first the same original beam that is the main beam and then shift the point from position B to position A without change in magnitude and direction plus one extra moment will produce. This time the moment of F about point A will be clockwise and the perpendicular distance is A. So this will have a clockwise moment and moment is equal to force multiplied by A. Then we have two reactions for hinge support and we have one reaction for roller support and you can solve the problem. The last load is called as couple load which is basically consists of two moment load by two equal and opposite forces. Let's say we have one force equal to F and is offset from the main beam by distance equals to D1. So this concept is same as the eccentric load concept. So using the same previous concept of moment, we can very well shift this load that is force F at a common point without change in magnitude and direction. So it will be same as value F and the moment of this force about the common point will be clockwise. So we have a clockwise moment here that equal to F multiplied by D1. But this is the moment load. To have a couple load, we have to apply one equal and opposite force that equal to F. So both the forces must be the parallel. They are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. And let's say this force is acting at distance equal to D2. So by the same principle, you have to shift this force at a common point. That will be as same magnitude equal to F. And the moment of this force will be clockwise about the common point. And that value will be equal to F multiplied by D2. Now what we have done is that we have shifted two forces but one is acting rightward and one is acting leftward and they are equal in magnitude. It means that we have minus F and this value will be plus F. So we have net force will be equals to zero. Means whenever we have a couple no force will act on the beam. And if we talk about the moment then the clockwise moment is taken as positive. This one is clockwise moment was taken as positive is F multiplied by D2 and this one is counterclockwise so we taken as negative value for calculation F into D1. So net value will be equals to F into D2 minus D1 but D1 is more than D2 so we have to write down this is minus of F into D1 minus D2. Now remember here D is the distance between D1 and D2 this is minus sign here. So we can write this as minus of F and D1 minus D2 is same as D. Now since the couple is a vector quantity, you have to always write by magnitude and direction. And negative sign says that you have to show it anticlockwise. Now you can do it directly also. Just remember that we have a two forces. Both are equal in magnitude and they are parallel. And just we are interested in the perpendicular distance between them. This time perpendicular distance is D1. And to check the sense of this one that is clockwise or anticlockwise, you draw one imaginary circle and check that this circle is rotating counterclockwise by downward force and counterclockwise by upward force also. So your sense will always same that is a counterclockwise. So resultant of this system will be that both forces will be get cancelled and we have pure couple that equal to F into D. So from this figure you can directly draw this figure and don't show any force just show for a couple and the sense of couple you can write as F into D and counterclockwise. Don't do the intermediate steps and you can directly write down the final answer.